All right, guys, in this video, it talks about the blood transfusion reactions. When I was studying for the step exams, I used to always kind of get these wrong until finally I just made a commitment to, to breaking out the chart and, and making sure that I understood everything is based on time. And if you understand the, the diagnosis, the, the mechanism behind it, and then, then, then what could have prevented it, you'll pretty much get any question that they ask on the, on the blood transfusion reaction. So I hope you find it helpful. And if it was, uh, you know, please hit subscribe. Uh, it lets us know that we're actually doing something that's, that's beneficial. All right, guys, so this is going to cover the uh, blood transfusion reactions, and this is something that you tend to see on the, uh, the STEF exams. So when you see the blood transfusion uh, reaction questions anytime, just remember, it's all based on time, okay? It's all based on time. So they got to give that to you somewhere in the question, and, and we'll take a look at that here in a second. So here's the y-axis, x-axis. This is going to be zero time, so that means right away. And then we have one hour, and then we'll say six hours, okay? So you got to know three things from this. You got to know what it's caused, uh, what it's called, I'm sorry, the mechanism behind it, and then also how you would have prevented it. So if you do a blood transfusion reaction, and then right away, immediately, that's going to be called anaphylactic, right? It's an anaphylactic reaction. So we're just going to call that the diagnosis on this, okay? Anaphylactic, right away. Now, if you do a blood transfusion reaction and then if something happens, say, you know, the symptoms, signs and symptoms that they like, chills, you know, fever, uh, fatigue, all that kind of stuff, if you have those at one hour or right around one hour, then we're going to call that one the acute hemolytic, okay, acute hemolytic reaction. And then if you have the reaction, say, between just after one hour all the way up to six, that's going to be called, that's going to be called a febrile non-hemolytic. So you have to know those right off the bat, okay? So again, all we did right now is say, look, a question talked about a blood transfusion. If the reaction occurred right away, it's anaphylactic. If it happened right around an hour, it's acute hemolytic. And then if it happened, you know, after an hour up to around up to six, it's febrile non-hemolytic, okay? Now, what's the mechanism of these, okay? Why did this happen? So what's the mechanism? If it was an anaphylactic reaction, that is basically an IgA deficiency, okay? IgA deficiency. If it's an acute hemolytic reaction, again, all based on time, that's an ABO incompatibility. Okay, and then if it's if it happened, you know, after one hour, closer up to six, that's a febrile non-hemolytic reaction, and the cause of that was increase cytokines. So you have to know that, and again, you should be able to work these backwards and forwards. If someone said, "Look, I have a blood transfusion, and I have a reaction at around three hours, four hours, five hours around this time frame," what's the cause? You could use, and they said there's increased cytokines you ought to work backwards and say, okay, that's a febrile non-hemolytic, okay? And then the last piece of this, besides the diagnosis using the mechanism, is what you could have done to prevent it, okay? And they like asking these questions. What could you have done to prevent it? Well, if it's an anaphylactic reaction caused by IgA deficiency, you should have washed the blood better, okay? Or they should have washed the blood. Now, if it's an ABO incompatibility of an acute hemolytic, well, that's some type of user error, right? There's something that occurred in the hospital, whether it was just the wrong blood type given, the wrong patient, you know, something along those lines, but it's basically, say, user error. And then if it's the last one, the febrile non-hemolytic or increase in cytokines, that's where you, they should have leukoreduction. And basically when they pull the, pull the blood apart, they may have left a white blood cell or two in there, and when it, when it uh, you know, when it stores, it, that's when the cytokines are released and then that causes a problem when you use the blood. So again, blood transfusion reaction, you think everything is based on time. That'll get you the answer. But you got to have this memorized. If it happens right away, anaphylactic. If it happens at one hour, acute hemolytic. And if it happens you know, greater than an hour, it's going to be febrile non-hemolytic. And then your mechanisms are IgA deficiency, ABO incompatibility, or increased cytokines. And the prevention is either wash it, user error, or leukoreduction. So now let's kind of apply this. It says, 
After a severe snowboarding accident, a 20-year-old man is transfused with erythrocytes and has fresh frozen plasma and, and fresh frozen plasma has an anaphylactic reaction. He has a history of HIV. His blood hemoglobin is 7.0, which the following prevention could have prevented this from occurring. Well, we know it's, in a, it's, it's an anaphylactic reaction. So again, we go here, it's right away. We know that's uh, anaphylactic. We know that's caused by IgA deficiency. And we know that we should have washed the blood. So what are they, they're only gonna ask you one of these three things, okay? That we knew it was anaphylactic. So in this one, what could have prevented it? They should have washed the blood, okay? This one says, 28-year-old male is involved in a severe motor vehicle accident and comes to the emergency room after significant blood loss. After approximately 45 minutes, after receiving two pints of blood, he develops shortness of breath, chills. Patient has positive history of CAD. Based on this information, what, what could have most likely prevented this reaction? Again, blood transfusion reaction. Everything's based on time, anaphylactic, one hour and then up to six, okay? This one says 45 minutes. Now, remember this. They might say 35 minutes, they might say 65. This is the rule of thumb, say, an anaphylactic happens right away. There's none of this 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It's right away. So anything that's around that or, or you know, outside the right away is gonna start falling into that, you know, that acute hemolytic one. So 45 minutes, we're looking here. That's called acute hemolytic. We know that that's an ABO incompatibility. And then we also know that that was a user error kind of thing. And again, what could have prevented this reaction from occurring? We gotta look for something that's a user error. So it's not IgA deficiency. It's not washing, it's not washing the blood, you know, double checking patient armband. That's a possibility, right? Leukoreduction. reduction, nope, that's for the, uh, <clears throat> the febrile non-hemolytic and it's not a normal reaction. You know, get used to seeing normal reaction on the exam but you better be pretty confident before you put that down. The best answer, the only answer in this one is gonna be double check patient armband. This one says a 52 year old man with a history of multiple stent placements is hospitalized for elective surgery. His preoperative hemoglobin is 7.5. He's transfused uh, two units of packed RBCs approximately two hours, okay, after starting the transfusion. The patient reports fevers, chills, blah, 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 blah. Temperature is 102, blood pressure is uh, 1382. The transfusion is, is immediately halted. Urinalysis is unremarkable. Uh, which of the following would have most likely prevented? Again, one of those prevention ones. Let me see, anaphylactic, acute hemolytic, and then this is the uh, febrile non-hemolytic. Now, we're looking at uh, two hours after, so we're, we're getting into it now. You say, well, look, it's kind of a gray area, right? It's, how do I know it's not the, the one hour one? Well, look at the other things. Remember what this one was called? This one's called febrile non-hemolytic, okay? Febrile, guy's got temperature. Non-hemolytic, right? Urinalysis is unremarkable. Nothing, you know, there's no lysing or anything like that. So that's why it's, if it's not the one hour and you got the supporting uh, data, uh, you know, for it, this one's gonna be a febrile non-hemolytic what could have prevented that one? When we go through the answer choices, it would be the leukoreduction. And then this one. It says a 28-year-old male is involved in a uh, severe motor vehicle accident and comes to the emergency room, emergency department after significant loss of blood. Immediately after receiving two pints of blood, pints of blood, he develops shortness of breath and chills. Patient is positive, patient is a, has a positive history of CAD. Based on this information, what could have likely prevented this reaction from occurring. All right, long story short, it's blood transfusion. Everything's based on time. And if we were to write this out, we would say this is anaphylactic. This is an acute hemolytic, right? This is a febrile non-hemolytic. And if we went into the uh, the mechanisms here, this is an IgA deficiency. This one's an ABO incompatibility. And then this one's gonna be a um, increase in cytokines. And then if we went into the preventions, we should, we should say this is a wash the blood. This one's gonna be, it was a user, something with a user error. They could have, the user could have done something to prevent it. Therefore, it was a user error. 
Um, and then this one is going to be the Leuco reduction. So back to this one, it says immediately, so we know we're in the anaphylactic category. It's just, then they're going to ask you one of these, whether it's the, the diagnosis, the prevention, I'm sorry, the diagnosis, the cause, or the, um, the prevention. Uh, what could have prevented it? It's going to be this one, it's going to be, and it's going to be the uh, uh, w wash, let's see, immediately, immediately after two points of blood. Yep, it's, it should be the washing the blood. All right, so I hope this helps. Um, and again, you know, kind of when in doubt, okay, when in doubt, um, you just draw this timeline and it should be immediate, one hour, and I always put six. And it, again, can't stress this enough, anaphylactic, acute hemolytic, hemolytic, and then febrile, non-hemolytic, and then we go into the mechanism, IgA deficiency, and we said this one was an ABO incompatibility, it's kind of a user error kind of thing, and then febrile non-hemolytic, it was an increase in cytokines, I know I sound like a broken record on this, and then you got to know the preventions, okay? You wash it, uh, you do something with the users, you know, armband, you know, better handoffs, all that kind of stuff. And then this one, you should do leuco reduction. Okay? And again, this is blood transfusions. And this will work on step one, step two, and step three. Hope this was helpful.